wanted to get back to how you learn the guitar because you're not like the typical fresh uh, metal dude because you can play it fast stuff and all that, but you also kill on the acoustic guitar, for example, you know, and stuff like that to get more baggage, you know. So yeah, I think it's there's probably some stuff like interesting to to tell. Yeah, about. I started with the uh, uh, acoustic guitar, playing br Brazilian popular music. You started with that? Yes, before, I started, you know. before electric guitar. Yes, uh, my grandma has a uh, had a guitar, uh, a classical not a classical guitar, acoustic guitar at home. She could play like three or four chords. Uh, she's uh, she came from Slovenia, uh, so she sang folk Slovenian songs and. Austrian, you know, Slovi uh, folk songs from that region, and uh, um, and she she had like a, I think eight sisters, and they all sing amazingly good. You know, it was uh, it was fantastic. I still have some tapes, you know, of the the recordings of uh, of them singing. You know, um, but my my grandma was too shy basically you know, to go on stage. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she she really she told she had some opportunities, you know, to to do stuff, uh, but uh, she she didn't have the the guts, yeah. <laughs> you know, to to go on stage and do it. But I started playing uh, guitar with her acoustic guitar, which I I, I have it till today. You know, my my first uh, guitar, and she was a big inspiration. You know, I I went every basically every once a week to to her house to pick up the guitar and. And, and her neighbor was my first teacher, uh, so there I went. You know, I wanna. My goal was to play "Star Way to Heaven." You know, mm. that was my. <laughs> that was an impossible goal. <laughs> but <coughs> that's what I wanted to do. You know, and um, my mom put me on the school. Uh, I used my grandma guitar and um, I started learning the basic chords. Uh, but basically playing Brazilian popular music. You know, of course listening to Led Zeppelin and Kiss and you know Black Sabbath all that. Uh, especially Kiss and Queen, and um, and then came the of course uh, the electric guitar, you know, because that's the the style of music I really liked. I love classical music as well. That's why you know uh, I wanted to to play the acoustic guitar uh, the best that I could, you know. Uh, but the guitar came first, let's say, and uh, the electric guitar came first. And uh, with friends in school, I formed my first band, you know, to play Def Leppard. Venom, Aussie, yeah. Twisted Sister, anything, <laughs> you know, Metallica, <laughs> all that, you know. And that was a great school because to play covers, you know, it's great. You feel, you you know, from Metallica to Quiet Riot or whatever we were playing at those days, you know. It was great to play leads and Judas Priest, you know, ACDC, basic chords as well, you know. So just developing the the ability to, to translate a little bit what I learned on the guitar, you know, to play yeah. uh, on, on the acoustic guitar, to play on the electric guitar. And I haven't, I never had a teacher on the electric guitar, you know, I always like, uh, with my ear listening to albums and trying to figure out and, you know, playing, w observing videos and stuff, because in Brazil we, we didn't have the chance to see shows and stuff yeah. like that, you know. How... And there was no YouTube. The peak, no. yeah. <laughs> I have friends and stuff who taught me little things here and there and uh, and I never really uh, abandoned the acoustic guitar uh, all contrary you know I, I, I learn even more when we moved to the States uh, then I start really learning classical guitar how to read uh, music and how to play different styles uh, of the the classical world you know a lot of Brazilian music that I didn't even know in Brazil I start learning with the classical music you know so it was a um, it's still today, I whatever I can, you know, I pick up yeah. my music and, and, and like to play and stuff. And uh, you know, like a nylon string. Nylon like string, that? yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, it's it started like that, but but the guitar was re always like you know, uh, learning by myself and learning with my my masters, you know, the bands that I love. Okay, okay, cool. And uh, and yeah, like this, uh, I think this uh, latest record, like Mission Messiah, is one of the best repertoire record, I think. And, uh, and yeah, slowly but surely, like you reintroduced in Sepertura a new level of you know intricate kind of play, playing. Like <coughs> there's technical, it's still catchy and hooky and direct, you know. But uh, yeah, there's definitely some 
difficult complex. Yes, yes. Yeah. And there's, we are talking about uh, acoustic guitar, like there's this uh, good jam, like the instrumental um, iceberg dancing. Yeah, yeah. Right, which is killer because yeah, you, you, you got like this whole section like, playing lead and get this section playing acoustic guitar and all that. Yeah, like, iceberg dancers was. Uh, yeah, there's even keys, which is yeah, wow, yeah. on the yeah, separate to our record, you know? <laughs> you know, Aspect Dances is a, it's a song that uh, uh, kind of I wanted to do like for many years, you know, to introduce or to use more the, the, the classical guitar together with the band. Not only as an intro or an acoustic song, you know, like Kiowa's or yeah. uh, Beneath the Remains, the intro and stuff like that, but uh, really in, put the, the, the classical guitar together with the band and stuff and Iceberg, Iceberg Dances was basically for that, you know, and then we have room really for the, the Hammond um, and, uh, and, and other stuff, you know, uh, around the album, like the violins and everything, you know, we had room really to explore more, more uh, new things. It's not new for Sepultura, we always use the yeah, classical yeah, elements, but it is, uh, it is, uh, I think we are more mature, you know, to, to mm. use those elements in a, in a better situation, better way. Yeah, and uh, who is the keys? Is it like a session guy? Or? No, it's, uh, it's um, Renato Zanuto, he's the guy who wrote the intro for the Vatican as well, okay, on yeah. the Mediator. Gosh, he's a good friend of ours, um, he, he played with us live on Rock and Rio last year, Iceberg Dances, doing the solo live. and. Uh, He's a good friend, we did many works together, he's a great maestro, he's a great musician, he knows so many different, uh, you know, musicians to do stuff, and uh, uh, a great arranger, and uh, he's a good friend, you know, uh, and um, whatever we can, you know, work together, he's, he's with us as well. Okay, that's cool. You, we are talking like orchestration, like the intro of the Vatican, like there's, a, uh, I think, yeah, the, uh, the single, like, um, Fun Himself, is yeah. To me, it's classic. Which will stay in set is for the future. I, I hope so. <laughs> you <laughs> no, get rid of it. Seems like yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, the orchestration is really important in that song. Yes. You know, so you can. Is it the same guy who did it? Or? No, no, no. That's another story. Um, we we had the the, the machine Messiah basically ready uh, yeah. in Brazil. Not ready. I mean, we always leave room of course for improvisation and the, the producer to come in and change things and stuff but we like to go in the studio with basically 80 to 90 percent you know we go in that direction we're going this and this and that but like i said we always leave room so i have a few guitar leads that i, I really knew what to do and a lot of other stuff that was opening and i left it open just to 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 deal with the uh, yens and and really you know develop uh, together with him so Phantom Self was one of them, you know, I have a few leads here and there. And then uh, he said, hey, you know, I work with this orchestra from Tunisia um, and uh, on the album uh, with Moonspell, you know. Okay. And he said, maybe, you know, it could work. Sworn Oath was a song that we really wanted to use, something like that, because the riff, you know, is already a violin riff, yeah, you know. Pa -da 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 -da. <laughs> you know, so, uh, and then he, he, he heard the Phantom Self, you know, and said, you know, there's a lot of room here that we maybe this guy can do something, you know. So he sent the song for this guy and he, he arranged, um, he, he kind of he understood, you know, that uh, the room and the place for the guitar and stuff, so he created this new possibility of this conversation, you know, the lead and the violin and the lead, the violin. And, uh, and it was working together with Jens, yeah, you know, well. the, something that we didn't, have an idea when we left Brazil, you know, but uh, when we got there, so wow, it really worked, and uh, and we used in a few songs like Re Resistant Parasites and Sworn yeah. Not, of course. You guys like really is like Chaos Alien Roots recently, our record label did it, yeah. And um, so I think it's good to to go back to because uh, those two records were pretty, they were not like it was what two years apart, but two, three years apart, three years apart, maybe it was 93 and 96. Uh, but yeah, the band evolved a lot uh, between those two, the yeah. sound, even the tuning, you know, the guitar sound, many, many things, you know. So, so from a, a gear perspective, you know, what what, what were you using on both records, basically, like, like uh, as far as amps and stuff like that, you know. Memory. Let's <laughs> see if I remember. Many, many things, many, many things. <coughs> no, basically, like, when we, we went to, to Florida to record a rise, we, we also was the, the, the first time we start investing in equipment. So we bought the first uh, Mesa Boogie heads. Yeah. It was just the Mark Trees and stuff, you know, those heavy heads and stuff. And we start a relationship with the company Mesa Boogie. 
and Arise, we did a worldwide tour. We stayed uh, almost three years on the road, two years and in, in, in a, a little bit. And uh, that was like a, a mind, you know, opening experience. We went to Australia, Japan for the first time. We played with Ozzy Osbourne, a tour in America for the first time. We did tour with Ministry. We played Rock in Rio in 91. Uh, first time in Rock in Rio, etc. So it was really, you know, everything was exploding. And uh, so Chaos AD was already an album that we could um, really explore all these new elements that we learned on the road, you know, to, to, to get more groovier, to, to look back to Brazil and be more uh, percussive. I kind of put my leads away and, and I started being more percussive, you know, like yeah. pro propaganda. You know that kind of stuff and uh, the leads the, the, and the leads like yeah during the nineties to me like what you're doing is like a, some control chaotic noise yeah sometimes. yeah like, yeah like ninety two like I started to be a little more percussive you know <laughs> instead of like you know yeah. like scales and stuff like that and uh, so we 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 went and really uh, bought um, some heavy mesa boogie stuff you know which I still have today mm -hmm. uh, the the strategy five hundred uh, power amp which was very powerful. The Tri-Axis preamp, yeah. which was the sound of Sepultura, you know, for many years, uh, starting from Chaos AD. On Roots, um, Ross came into the picture, and Ross is a much more spiritual producer, you yeah, know, yeah. so he likes more of the vintage vibe, and we were looking for that, you know. We went to the Indigo Ranch studio, which is like a, a museum of great equipment you know that we could use and he wanna he wanna us to to put the mesa boogie away and just yeah. use marshall and i said no <laughs> <laughs> max can use the, the marshall stuff and be more you know but we need that a little how can i put it the you know the, the drums and the guitar really tight you yeah, know yeah. instead of being too much loose you know yeah, yeah. so I really fought to, to use my Mesa Boogie stuff and I use my Mesa Boogie stuff I use my, my Jacksons with EMG pickups which was something that we are starting to develop together as well so the sound of that era was Jackson EMG and Mesa Boogie stuff okay. you know and then Max... Uh, so the Tri-Axis or was it like Dual Octifier type of stuff? No, all Tri-Axis and then the strategy. I used that for so many years on Against, yeah. on Roarback and stuff. Okay. Up to the point I changed to, to Orange, like, yeah. I don't know, 10 years ago or so. 10 years ago, like yeah, yeah, on the right. Yeah, Rocker Verb maybe? Uh, Rocker Verb, yeah, Mark 200. Okay. And you know, it, it worked great, you know, because um, uh, that was the sound that really we were looking for, you know, really tight and... Um, and uh, was something new as well, you know, for, for that. They don't build that anymore, they don't construct that yeah, anymore. Yeah. I, I know Metallica great. uses the, the tri axis for many years as yeah. well. Because it was the sound of metal, you know, it was really powerful and uh, you could really take, you know, the 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 heavy sound that we were looking for for guitars. Yeah? Okay, and so you said like you were sticking like to a range like since 10 years. So uh, Kairos, uh, The Mediator, and Machine um, Messiah has been done on the same type of head, you know? Because uh, yeah, to me, I, I really listened to the record recently, uh -huh. uh, from the interview, and uh, but backwards, you know, I started with Machine Messiah up to uh, uh, right. down to against, you know, cool. and uh, and when it struck me, like the guitar sound on Kairos, you know, struck me at the time, but uh, yeah. seemed a bit thinner than the last two records, you know. It, it, it doesn't sound like the last two records sounds like a bit like the same guitar sound, you know. Mm -hmm. Also, a different producer and all yeah, that. yeah. But Kairos sounds, sounds different. Yeah, we did with Roy Z, we did in Brazil, yeah. uh, in Sao Paulo, um, and um, you know what, I, do, I, I think I use, uh, because in the studio, man, it, it, yeah, you know, it's well, open. Uh, I mean, yeah. on Mediator, for instance, I use Vox, and uh, the, the same cabinet that I use on Roots, which is a completely destroyed cabinet <laughs> there that Ross kept, you know, but it sounds <laughs> fucking amazing, you know. And uh, and I use Marshall heads. I use PV. I use diesel. You know, yeah. uh, orange. You know, everything. It's there, and it doesn't matter the brand. It it, it matter what we what we are looking for. You know, yeah. of course, live is something else. You know, we have my sound, and because we have to represent everything, but on the studio it's open. So uh, on Mediator and as well on the, um, on on uh, Machine Messiah. I use many different heads, you know. To, uh, oh yeah, but live, yeah, you've been sticking. Live, I still orange, yeah, and um, 
I used EVH for a while as well, yeah. between Orange and stuff, which was cool. But um, yeah, it seems to be very comfortable for me, Orange. It's, it's very organic, you know, very open. Yeah. Um, you see, Mesa Boogie and the tri -axis. I play so much with it that I couldn't, you know, find anything more yeah. <laughs> inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It seems that I, I, I was like, you know, locked on that sound forever, you know, because yeah. I explored basically everything around there, you know. And Orange came to, to give, I think, new perspectives, you know. Okay, and the other version which was interesting is like I think Arise was E standard kind of tuning. Yeah. Uh, Kelsey is definitely D. And, yeah. Uh, Roots is B, you know, and uh, but it's B, but it was a slow record, so um, which shoots like this kind of tuning. But uh, later, I mean, already on the guess there was some fast stuff coming back in Nation as well. Uh, but uh, there was some very fast stuff on yeah. short stuff on Nation and. Uh, the one with uh, Jamie from Headbread and stuff like that. It, and, it, uh, it was like a taboo, man, for me as well. You because know? you, you record it fast, and there's not many fast band playing that low, low too, you know. Yeah. It's usually a little slow band, you know. Yeah, but we, we got used to that, you know, yeah. and uh, and it sounds great. I mean, you see Napalm Dad, for instance. They have yeah, no yeah, tune, that's fucking wow, you know. <laughs> but. Uh, I remember being like kind of reticent, you know, to try to use lower tuning because I was scared, you know, really to lose that uh, the tightness and the tightness, exactly, yeah. the, the the picking and stuff. That's why I started using heavier gauge strings, you know. I use 13s to 60 now, you know. It's almost like a baritone, you know, in the yeah. <laughs> in that uh, uh, border, you know. But um, he, I was I was kind of skeptical when um, Dino Casares was the one. Hey man, use the lower tune; it's gonna be great for you guys. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. And finally, you're great, fast. you know. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, from a rise yeah. to to KUZD, we already dropped, you know, yeah. uh, to D, well, which thanks. already gave like you know, refuse resist and territory gave uh, you know, a new. Yeah, yeah. You know. The album was a little more groovier, also not so fast as a rise. Yeah. And Roots, of course, you know, came lower. But um, I mean, I see Jimmy Page and Tony Iommi, they deal with tunings all the time, you know, and it, it works. I mean, it's something that um, it gives us, um, like for a song like Roots, you know, it's only one single note, like, you know, and, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the, the tuning and the heaviness of the strings, it gives like, you know, fat sound, you know, it helps. Yeah, totally. And uh, in live, by the way, are you playing all the song now in beast uh, tuning or do you pick up like a E string guitar for playing a rise? Or? No, 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 we, we kind of adapt the, the songs. Uh, uh, all the stuff we did in E, we play in D nowadays. Okay. A rise, inner self, you know, all that old stuff, you know. Of course, the stuff uh, on, on, on Chaos AD, we have D and D sharp as well some songs but we all we, we, we play oh, all in D yeah. and uh, and on roots as well we have like a B and B flat you know but we kept it as, as a B flat uh, live okay and it's been working great you know I mean we see many singers like Dio for instance you know the drop the tuning because you know the voice is not yeah, the yeah, same yeah. anymore and uh, so it's, it's something that live really works